Hello, everybody, to our session today on the state of open source software in Germany 2021. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you join us from the globe. I hope you are doing well. My name is Marcel Scholze. I'm director at PwC, and I'm head of our open source software services. And today I'm here with my colleague, Julian, who will introduce himself now. Hi, my name is Julian, and I am a manager for open source software management services at PwC as well. And I would like to uh, introduce PwC for a second and give you some, some quick glance on why we are so involved in open source. Now, PwC is historically an audit firm. So we are more involved in making sure that risks are appropriately managed. And of course, open source has some inherent risks. Uh, think of managing uh, using open source with complete disregard to the licenses. But we realize that there are even more risks in not using open source because open source is everywhere. It's the foundation to, uh, to share and collaborate and to have more innovative products. And in this mindset, we want to enable a digital open source, open source future by providing managed services. For instance, with our OSPO as a service, we want to take the, um, the cumbersome work of the OSPOs, especially in compliance areas and so in security. Uh, in consulting, we want to take, I uh, want to help you um, enable open source usage and get a good strategy on the road. And of course, reduce risks by audit and certification and get some more understanding uh, into your suppliers and their use in open source. So um, we first want to introduce you to the design of the study. So you know where the data comes from and um, that you can put this into um, context. So the monitor was performed now the second time by the Bitkom. Bitkom is the German digital association and is representing companies um, of the digital economy. We first did this study in 2019 and now in 2021 with almost the same question set, we performed this study again. And the target group is the German market. Interviews were performed between May and July 2021 um, via telephone. And um, in total, more than 1,150 organizations here in Germany were interviewed, um, company size, um, bigger 20 employees. And also this time, the first, uh, first year, um, we also interviewed um, over 100 public administration organizations. The study was, as I said, performed by the Bitkom and was sponsored and supported uh, by uh, many big uh, companies and associations here in Germany, one of them being PwC. And I believe it's so important that we have some changes here now. We added uh, smaller companies from 20 to 100 uh, employees, which we believe is just a great market for open source. Uh, and we added the public administration and we'll get to this at, at, the, at the end of the talk. And I believe it's just very important to see where they are currently at because they have quite different challenges than the industry. Uh, but we see that they are still very interested in open source. Exactly. So thank you. Julian. On the next slides, we'll focus on, on the industry, outcome from the industry. And then at the end of the presentation, we'll look into the details what public um, services did to respond to our questions. So let's start with the industry. And um, we've put together the um, best information from strategy, usage, contribution, compliance, security, and um, questions on ISO 5230, so open chain compliance standard. And um, we are a bit excited today because um, this is the first time we are presenting these results um, to a wider audience because this whole study was just published last Thursday. So it's brand new. It's just out now. Um, currently only available in German, but in the next days uh, or weeks it will come out in English as well. So um, actually it's really um, exciting to, to present this today to all of you. So we start with the lightweight questions regarding the perception of open source. Um, and um, so the general question was, what is your position of your company towards open source? And here you can see that um, actually quite, quite a great figure of 67% 
um, that they're interested in open mind towards open source. And 25% are undecided, 7%, only 7% are skeptical. And there's a small percentage, 1% um, who have no opinion or did not did not respond. So, but um, um, this is, as I say, a great number in terms of um, open-minded people towards open source. And um, when we now look at the numbers by company size. So as Julian said, we have um, different company sizes um, interviewed from 20 to 99 employees, from 100 to 199, from 200 to 400, from 500 to almost 2000, and then large companies above 2000 employees. And so with some of the questions, um, we'll show you now all, always some results um, in general, um, and, and then um, specified for the different company sizes so that we can also see is there a difference between um, the, the size of the company or which results because of the size of the company. And here when you look at, um, at this question, for example, there's only one slight higher number with 79% um, in the mid-sized companies, 500 to 2,000 employees. Um, who say with 79% that they are interested in open mind, but in general, the numbers are quite equally, quite, quite, uh, quite the same across all company sizes, I would say. So, um, but the question is, why are so many companies on board with open source? So um, what are the big advantages, Julian? What do they say? Thank you. I mean, the most obvious is still cost. Uh, by the way, we did this uh, survey two years ago, as Marcel mentioned, and costs actually was lower that time around. I think it was around 19%. So now we're still on a 24% uh, cost increase in uh, um, cost benefit for open source. But what I find astonishing is that openness is, in at, le at least in some, more important than cost. And this is something we should focus on because companies don't really use open source anymore because it's cheaper. Yes, of course, for 24%, this is like the uh, most important factor. Um, but even more of those are interested in the access to the source code. By the way, this one grew uh, two, um, by 7% over the last year, uh, over the last two years. So uh, just accessing the source code provides companies with way more security than, um, well, than it did before. And just access to open stands, standards and interoperability with 3% of all people asked um, is actually quite interesting. Still, of course, things like the vendor login with 8% are uh, quite important. Although we all know that in open source, you can't always change the uh, provider, but still for 8%, this is the most important aspect. Um, well, for aspects like IT security, I think it's it's interesting to see that this isn't a dominant factor anymore. Um, I think there was a time when open source was regarded as very unsecure. Then we had a time where it was regarded as extremely secure. Uh, right now, this is not the point anymore. Open source might be secure. And sometimes for some projects, it is regarded that way. But being open is way more important for many than the, the aspects of security that seem to arise from such a business model. But of course, yeah. we have some, dis oh, Marcel? Yeah, I just wanted to mention this point. So 14% um, said, said there's no advantage of open source. So coming from these 14%, which don't see any advantages of open source, let's look into the disadvantages of open source, which were mentioned. By the way, um, this was an open question so um, the responses were just categorized um, in, in the study, but generally we didn't provide any fixed answers. So the interviews um, were performed and the responses were open. So now, same with um, asking about the disadvantages. So Julian, what is uh, the outcome here? The disadvantage is you don't have enough people for it. That's the problem. Uh, <laughs> human resources is just up there with the lack of skilled labor, uh, training opportunities and, and internal capabilities. This is the main factor why people 
or why companies tend to not like open source. By the way, we have uh, this is single answer only, right? We were not able to, or we didn't want to give uh, the top five reasons why open source is bad, and we wanted the top reason. And seeing human resource as the single top reason um, why open source might be at a disadvantage, this is quite interesting, especially as it doesn't have to be this way, right? We have various uh, different business models around open source, uh, some emerging, some are very well known, where the availability of, of services and of software uh, isn't really tied to your internal capabilities anymore. And this is something that just is slowly making it th its way into the, uh, into the uh, use of open source. And there are some other things like uncertainty, which is, of course, uh, especially considering open source as, uh, as the free component that you don't have support for. Uh, obviously, there is little liability. Um, but again, this seems to be something that can be addressed with uh, appropriate means. An interesting thing is that IT security is about as much a disadvantage as it is an advantage, uh, <laughs> at least according <laughs> to our survey. So um, I believe this is, this is again, this is the idea that open source can be more secure, it can be less secure. And this is what the survey showed. At least 9% of all companies consider open source to be inherently less secure. I mean, this is a number that we have to face. Um, and sometimes this might even be true. And the last one, the last group that I want to focus on is the offer. Um, there is just not enough open source around. So if we take this and combine it with the human resource part of things, the major problem with open source is because, because these two together are uh, over 50%, right? The major problem with open source is there's just not enough of it. Then <clears throat> after these introdu uh, introduction questions to open source, um, we came up with one important question about open source software strategy. So do you have an open source software strategy? All the companies were asked and these are here the results. Um, only 25% stated yes, they have an open source strategy in place and 72% said no, there's no open source software strategy. And Again, perhaps this is not too bad because it's an overall um, question to the whole industry. However, we believe this number has to grow um, because strategy is very important to make use of all the benefits that open source can provide and also is important on the other end to manage risks um, that might occur due to open source. So a strategy is a starting point. <clears throat> and therefore, um, we have this strong feeling that yeah, the availability of a strategy and to look from a strategic point in the company or in the, um, in the IT sector of the company, how can I um, use open source best and what is the strategy for my overall company behind it is very important. And when we look here um, at the company sizes, what, what the individual company um, sizes um, did respond, we can actually see that larger companies above 2000 employees, they actually have um, an open source policy or a strategy in place um, by 50% already. So there we can see larger companies um, already realize that it makes sense to look at open source from a strategic point um, and um, to implement the strategy, first of all. Also, you've been consulting and, and um, involved with these strategies. Not all of them, of course, but is this a new trend? Is this something uh, that has come up just in the last year? Uh, or is this uh, a, a larger thing that actually more companies are currently adopting this and have been on the road for years? Good question. I mean, from my point of view and what we've seen in the market is that, um, of course, open source is around there for 20, 30, 40 years. And it was used um, in the IT departments. It was um, used for many applications for software development and so on. So it, it is around already. But um, thinking about it strategically, um, as you mentioned before, for example, in terms of how to manage um, the HR topic, 
um, how to manage all the benefits and so on. So this is rather newish, I would say. I mean, um, it also came up in over the last decade in terms of managing the risks of open source. We talk in, about an open source compliance management system. And then when you talk about a compliance management system or a general management system, management system should always um, have included a strategy because based on the strategy, policies, processes, tooling, etc., um, can be applied and aligned to the strategy. And therefore, I think it's rather newish. Um, and as you can also see, 2019 in our survey, um, a few, it was a few percentage left, uh, less, sorry, less who, who had an open source strategy in place. So it is a growing trend to implement an open source strategy. This is actually quite interesting. So what I'm hearing is that the, these new challenges that we have, right, the, the abundance of open source and still the lack of even more open, or the problem with, that there's not enough open source, this leads to a new approach to open source, not with some smaller divisions doing open source the way they need to, but we start to focus it onto the larger strategies of the whole company to address problems that are, to in a certain degree, new, I believe. Yes, of course. I mean, with, with open source, you can drive your digitalization, you can drive um, leadership on the market in particular areas, you can set standards, you can attract uh, talents and so on. And these are, I think, um, strategic questions for a company, for a product portfolio, for a company's portfolio, um, where open source can have an, an important influence. And therefore, um, we, we, we suggest to, to think about it strategically and come up with an overall open source strategy that, of course, um, aligns to the company's strategy. That makes sense, of course. Oh, this is a great one. Do you use open source? It's, uh, this, is, <laughs> this is one of those, those questions that you just have to ask and you know the answer is going to be interesting in one way or another. So 71% of companies do not believe that they use open source. Now this is unlikely, right? Uh, there is open source in every mobile phone, in literally uh, every component, every software that you have will have some sort of open source in it. Uh, even Microsoft Office has open source components. So uh, it's unlikely that 26% managed to go without. But it actually, I believe this is more a, um, a, a question of mindset. Do you consciously use open source? Maybe for the reasons that it is open source, um, or do you want to, or do, are, you, are you aware that open source plays a role in your supply chain at some point? And I believe this is a great number. Again, 71% of companies are aware that open source has something to do, so to speak, uh, with their daily lives on their business. And again, this is a representational study. 71% of all companies, now there are a lot of companies around and most of them are not related to software, but still 71% are completely aware that open source is part of them. I believe this is great. Of course, should be a hundred, uh, but uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> I mean, we explained earlier in terms of the setup of the, of the study that this time we um, included companies um, with 20 employees and above. 2019, we only questioned company with 100 employees and, and above. So therefore, it's a bit tricky to make the comparison. But of course, we have all the detailed numbers and figures. And when we compare this number here, actually um, and, and look at the companies with 100 employees and above, actually 76% say they use open source. And this compared to 2019, it's um, um, uh, an increase of 10%. So actually between 2019 and 2021, um, it increased by 10%. So more and more companies realize or state that they use open source software. Again, a good trend, a good uh, trend in terms of realizing that they do use open source. And um, the question is now, um, which of the following statements, so in which areas do they use open source? Um, Julian, can we categorize this a bit or what is, what is the main 
information here how they use open source. <laughs> Yes, uh, so we can um, maybe group them a little bit. If the first two are, are you using open source without changing the source code? With the first one focusing on internal usage and the second one onto uh, products and solutions. And then we go into the next two bars, which change open source. So do you change open source for your internal products or uh, for your internal solutions or products? And um, I believe this is actually quite interesting. This is multiple choice, by the way. So of course, you can use components without changing them and you can change them. Both are completely fine with us. And um, actually, with j just one number that, that struck me was, was that 21% of all companies, this is the, the, the bottom one, are actually well aware that they use open source, make changes to the source code within their products. So this is, uh, I believe, a quite interesting number because right here we see that open source is such an important and vital part of their product development that they have to change the component itself to make what they wanted to do. And um, I, I just believe this is this is an, uh, an incredible thing. Of course, fifty-two percent are well aware that they use open source within their company without changing source code. This is completely fine. Um, should it be a hundred? Well, again, representational study. I don't know. Um, many companies do. But don't leave out the last number was 8%, which I think is quite interesting. Yes, 8% uh, of all companies actually use open source in their core products. This is, this is relevant, absolutely. So open source did change from being such just a niche thing, right, to basically part of every product, right, from routers to, to cars these days, right? It just made its way onto the mainstream. Although 8% seems low, I believe it's higher. I believe 8% do it consciously, it is going to be a higher number in reality. Okay, so we talked about open source strategy and about management systems before and here the next slide does show us interesting um, figures about um, open source software management actually divided into company sizes so the question was how many employees um, in your company focus fully on open source software management so it's not about um, people who design products and who um, um, who produce products, or who who code, or something, who use open source software as part of their job. It's it's really about open source software management in terms of security and compliance, license compliance. Um, it's about um, policies to make open source work within the company. So it was explained. It's about. Um, let's face it's in the OSPO. So how many people do you have in your OSPO? That's actually the question. And when we look here at the figures, um, the, um, the results or the answers uh, were actually numbers of FTEs which were named. And when we look here, um, quite interesting is that one to five FTEs, so that's quite an amount of, of people, one to five FTE who fully focus on open source software management um, are stated by many companies by 39, 61%, 54%, 49%, and then in big, larger companies, 30% of the companies say they have, have one to five FTE managing open source. And then when you look at um, uh, larger companies, 2000 employees and above, they actually, um, with 46% state that have, they have more than five FTEs to, to work on open source management. I mean, of course, we know the examples from large global organizations who have 20 or 30 people or more in a centralized um, center managing open source, centralized OSPO with satellites. Um, they do code checks and um, license compliance tasks and so on. But um, I mean, these are global and large organizations. But um, when, when we talk about companies with 2,000 employees and above, um, 
I think it's quite an impressive number that 46% say they have five or more people to manage open source. Absolutely. Um, by the way, um, we have a different number, not from this monitor, but the to-do group tends to do surveys on a yearly basis as well. And the to-do group, those of you know, uh, basically the Linux Foundation's um, OSPO network, I would call it. Um, they ask, they have a survey where they, where they ask their members and other people to participate and give an, give an estimate on how many people work in their OSPOs. And they have a different number because and it is going to, it is vastly higher. They have over 10 persons, uh, over five, uh, over 10 FTEs uh, per company doing open source software uh, management. And um, I just find this very, very interesting because right, this is a number for, uh, the, the to-do group has a very good number for companies in the Linux foundation, right? For companies who do open source, who are contributing, who are, uh, who tend to be leading in some way, but this one is representational, right? This is everyone. <laughs> and I find it quite interesting to see that still, if we remove this focus, we still have 14% of medium larger companies, 500 to 2000, with more than five FTEs involved and over 2000, even if you're not an open source or Linux Foundation member, it's still going to be 50% with more than five FTEs involved. I believe this is just an interesting number to, to grasp that actually every company or most companies are in some degree related to open source and feel obligated to manage it. Talking about managing it, um, we come to our next figure here, which is about um, security, because managing open source, one part of this is, of course, um, the enablement. It's also um, the compliance. But a um, very important topic today is also, of course, security. So, Julian, what um, what is the latest here from this survey about um, security assessments? Well, I hope this is not the latest and greatest because according to this survey, we do manual checks. Uh, <laughs> now, I believe open uh, automation in the security uh, frontier is on the rise. I believe this is understood. Uh, still, there's a lot of manual work involved. I believe this is the one key aspect that we have to take away from this. Um, there are just so many things in open source compliance, uh, open source management from security to compliance, right? Um, that's just not well automated. This goes to hardening, right? Hardening containers, this tends to be manual work. Uh, checking upstream, there's a lot of manual work involved. And right, tools are coming up, solutions are coming up um, are, or are available. Um, but we still see that a lot of um, personnel is just bound to do manual, uh, manual security. Um, something uh, from assessing uh, components to creating hardened containers or applications. And we believe this is something that is going to change over time because um, we still see that open source has uh, had a tremendous growth in the last year. So I believe this is something that is due to that, that open source has just overwhelmed many companies, uh, snuck into their mm -hmm. Uh, processes and it's just about to um, get more optimized I would I would say oh yeah, and also perhaps perhaps one information here on this um, graphics for example so these are the companies um, interviewed who um, use open source or integrate open source so um, the sample size is a little bit um, smaller um, and therefore, it's actually the companies who say they don't use open source, they didn't respond to this question. So it's only the companies who actually say they use and integrate open source and develop open source software and so on. But I think um, it's a little bit frightening um, that 23%, so that's one quarter, actually state that um, they don't do any um, security checks at all. Um, and perhaps they become aware of vulnerabilities or they do not. So that's a number I think that needs to be worked on. Um, and Julian, you mentioned all the manual work. And for me, always the challenge with manual work is um, that it's labor intensive. 
it might not be so effective. And um, sometimes with manual work, of course, um, also issues may arise. So, um, and uh, I think that's, again, a topic that needs to be worked on. And when we now look at um, the next question, so selection criteria for open source software projects, um, can we see there any um, co combination or any on any hint from from security um, and how relevant is this for for the companies when they select open source software projects? Absolutely. The, the thing is, we don't know who answered uh, which uh, um, uh, uh, which um, question in relations in relation to a, a previous one because i would wonder uh, looking at professionalism and the cve count on security projects do 55 percent of companies are these the manual checks or is part of these the 25 percent who just hope cves don't exist so um <laughs> there are various ways to look at this but um actually this is uh, this is interesting that having a project with few cves tends to be the number one criteria to use a product and just being followed by free use. Actually, by the way, um, we consciously um, have free use and royalty free. So this is, again, this is very similar to the openness aspect that we had in the beginning. Companies have more um, regard for free software in terms of software that they can change and they can have access to and so and so on then just the pure fact that it's for free because this again this is something that's slowly coming into people's understanding even the open source ecosystem needs to be paid and even support needs to be uh, bought at some place or another so uh, the royalty part slowly coming down more important that things are free but most important that they are secured in some way Something that I personally find interesting is that the community tends to be very irrelevant to a given degree, um, which I find interesting um, that the reputation and activity of a community doesn't seem to be such a large factor anymore. We wonder how this can be, um, but I believe this is a lot of due to the fact that this is just a very intransparent thing. Many components are just done. They are not exposed directly to the internet. And you're just happy that they exist the way they are. Um, so basically make sure there's no CV in it and whether or not it gets developed further isn't of large concern. Although we still have to have to uh, keep in mind, um, most com well, although most, com uh, most companies didn't take very important in the community qu uh, parts, it's still important, right? So maybe not, not, don't draw this too uh, too dark, but it's it's an interesting change here. Okay. So um, now let's look at particip participation in open source software development. So the question here is, does your company participate in development of open source? And I think um, that's quite an important question. Um, and because, uh, open source and the community, I mean, that's the basis of, of open source to actually share and collaborate and to participate, um, or at least a very important part. So um, when we look here at these numbers, um, the, the answers were, were 55% participate in open source software development and 43% that do not participate so far. And um, here in the middle, when we look how it's spread over the company size, um, there's not too much difference. Um, only larger companies, um, 2,000 employees and above, actually say with 75% they participate in um, open source software development. Can I ask you something? You said 42% do not participate in open source yet. Should every company consider participating in open source development or is there a reason why maybe you shouldn't? Or is this, is this a road for everyone? Basically, it, it would be best if we all end there. 
I mean, it comes back to the question of strategy and where do you use open source software in your company and what do you use it for? Um, of course, it would be great if everyone does participate. Um, and the next question is actually, how was this question in terms of um, participation interpret? So, um, I mean, if you participate in a community and just um, raise some questions or make some suggestions, that's also participation. If you, if you upstream bug fixes or um, smaller code amendments, that's of course participation. And um, particularly this makes sense um, when, you, when you depend on some open source software um, and um, you don't want to make a fork within your organization and then have to um, further develop the component on your own. It makes sense to participate, to, to upstream, etc. But if you ask me if everyone has to be a project maintainer and has um, to have 20 projects out there up and running, um, I think that's very individual based on, on the company and, and um, the fields the company um, works in. So, and when we look here at um, in which way they participate uh, in the open source software development, it's interesting um, because 36% is the highest number. They say we buy support services or subscription for enterprise editions of open source. So that's also some part of participation. Um, if, if you buy services um, and pay for it, um, where open source software is further developed, you don't do it with your own stuff, but you engage with other companies you, who do that. That's also participating in open source software development. Um, and impressing 21% say that um, employees or teams in, within their company um, participate in the open source community and in projects. And um, here's the, the number at the bottom, 9% say that they change open source code um, and provide it back to the community. Uh, and that's, um, I guess, a good, a good uh, and impressive number. But it has to go up. It will, <laughs> it will. <laughs> this weekend will be short. By the way, looking at the time, uh, I think we should uh, speed up a little bit so we have a chance to actually look at the public sector. Okay, so then I'll take this slide. It's a quick one. Um, we talked about participation in open source. We talked about strategy. And this is a mandatory question, of course. Um, do you have an open source software policy and um, a compliance process? And um, just remember how many people actually say that they participate in open source and they use open source, but an open source policy to manage open source within the company, only 22% um, state they have. Again, the numbers, I think that has to go up. Um, and it actually compared to 2019, um, it went up a lot. Um, it went up by 59% compared to 2019 um, in the like for like um, comparison. And when we now look at um, the compliance process, do they have um, compliance processes um, implemented uh, and documented? 48% um, say they have a compliance process. So again, interesting, 48 have a compliance process, but only 22 have a policy. So it's again, they, they do something, but perhaps it's not completely written down in a policy and, um, and um, spread over the whole company. Actually, this is something uh, that, that uh, we see quite often that there tend to be some divisions who do open source, do it for longer, have some some uh, older experts in the field. And of course, they know how to do their, their compliance processes, but it never made its way to a corporate policy, right? So there are still a lot of divisions who are, don't have uh, the compliance pro uh, a, a policy or the process. And this, of course, reflects in the policy, right? The, the governing thing often is just not there. But for many, the processes, they, they, they know they exist at some point. And as you can see, 50% don't have a compliance process at all, which leads us to the next um, slide with um, a question about the adoption of ISO 5230, Julian. So what is this about? Oh, this is basically the question. I mean, you all know ISO 5230, this is Linux Foundation's open chain standard. So those are big management standard for open source in companies. And 
it is being recognized. Um, I mean, it is an ISO standard now, so it's hardly to be avoided. And still we have 50% of companies who are not that aware of it. Um, interestingly, at least for me, is that this doesn't really change in regards to company size. Um, it's <laughs> it's 50% um, for all company sizes, right? Okay, some, some 40s in it, but basically it's always 50%. And this is the ones uh, for the companies who actually have dealt with open chain, right? So not the 50% who didn't. And these ones, uh, they see a lot of value in open source. So basically, if you, if you want to look at the, uh, at the right side graph for a second, the rather small added value, this is the, right, the, the red part. Um, right for smallest companies, 41%, this is just another compliance requirement, probably. Um, at least this is how I believe it is felt. But for the larger companies, up from starting with a hundred, and especially for the ones who uh, work for the big, uh, for the big OEMs, for instance, the five hundred to two thousands, they see a large, a larger value in open chain. And um, especially if you, if if we ignore the twenty two hundred for a second, because again they have other things to do than compliance more often than not. There's a huge demand for open chain, right? 100 to 200 employees, rather small companies, see um, see very high value, at least for 36%. This we believe is is an extremely high value. Uh, we did not expect that to be such so well received. Um, and again, the 500 to 2000s, just 6% saw small value. This is, I believe, again very important, impressive. Um, but understandable, right? These are the companies who provide a large amount of, of products to more compliance-driven larger companies. So they are happy to have some sort of way, some way to document their process, to, to um, basically have a process to follow, understand how best practices in open source work, because they more often than not already do a lot of open source. Um, but it's it's not very regulated, right? There are very few processes that you can follow. And now we have one, and this is what we see here. Yeah, and actually to self-certify, to show then to your customers and clients, or to get certified by an external party and then have an official certificate on compliant open source software management. So that's um, the value I think they, they see here. Absolutely. I mean, we have seen the full-time equivalents that are busy with doing open source compliance uh, in and out. And this is something that I have at least experienced multiple times that they are busy with the software, the products they get provided, right? They, they're the software they buy from their suppliers and whether or not it's compliant is weirdly documented sometimes. Uh, because it wasn't really standardized for a long time. And this is not something that we are going to change. This is um, actually, this is going to free up resources significantly because now we understand that there are processes in place to manage open source accordingly and uh, basically and reduce the risks very, very, very unanimously. And now let's have a look at public sector and their answers. So as we mentioned before, first time, um, this group was also interviewed and involved. Um, 100 public sector organizations were questioned. And here we present um, a focus on strategy, usage, and contribution. And we always compare it actually to the numbers from the industry. So this puts it a little bit into, um, into context. So we start here again with perception of open source software and public administration. Um, what is your position? And you remember here, you, you can see the higher number, the, the more reddish, so the red color and, and compared to the orange. So the red is um, industry and orange is public sector. 
and um, interested and open-minded are only 32 percent in the public sector this is less than half of the industry and skeptical and dismissive are actually 23 percent so that's almost one quarter are skeptical towards open source software which is again a much higher number than uh, what we've seen and hear from the industry doesn't look too good does it but <laughs> but I believe there's a good reason for it. Public, uh, the, the public sector is differently regulated. And I've spoken with, uh, with um, people from the public administration who uh, even, even, even just create, making something open source that they have already, completely regardless of whether or not this um, uh, made, might impact their business or not, they're not even sure whether or not that's allowed. So they have a completely different set, a rule set because once the public sector, for instance, introduces new software, maybe they paid for it from tax money and so on. And while this is demanded by many uh, throughout the world, look at public money, public code, for instance, it's completely unclear whether or not they are allowed to do this, at least for many of them. And I believe many see a lot of risks related, related to open source. They um, often have a more complex legal structure in terms of how they got their software in the first place. And I believe this all leads to being more skeptical, more dismissive, not really just being against open source, but I believe there's a larger fear that they can't just use it that simply. Also skeptical because perhaps um, they think about using and doing open source also has something to do with um, skills, skill set and people and HR that they need additional people to to actually be involved and uh, in open source software and um, in public sector it might not be so easy to uh, and not so flexible to onboard new people um, to, to have these positions and um, so this might be auch, also one case um, why they are actually skeptical because they perhaps think it's not so easy for them to manage. Um, when we look here on the right hand side, um, the numbers are not so different to, to the industry. Um, so the answer of do we use open source software is 46% compared to 71% in the industry. Um, and so I think there the difference is not uh, so strong. Absolutely. I just like to point out that they have 5% more strategy uh, than the industry while have a completely different view in terms of their interest. And again, I, I'd like to put the idea forward that uh, the barrier is higher. So these tw the 30% uh, percent who are actually interested and open-minded about open source are most likely the ones, the 30% who have the OSS strategy. So that for them, it's more of a requirement to actually do open source, to make, a make it formal than for the industry who can just go ahead and have the strategy for, for other purposes. Yeah, I'm just um, conscious of time going to the next slide. Um, we just wanted to highlight also this question, participation, open source software development. I mean, it's not surprisingly based on the um, slides before and figures before. So the participation in open source software development in the public sector is a little bit lower than in, in the industry compared um, 64% to 55%. Um, and of course, then the answer that they do not participate in open source software development is by 50% is higher than in the industry. Um, but I think this is something that which will change over the next years. That's yeah, probably going to increase. But Marcel, still 46% of the public sector say they participate in open source development. This is not too bad. Again, again, this is just the German, German <clears throat> sector. So we might have to focus on that. Um, but uh, I believe for every, every public sector, the perception is smaller. So uh, actually I'm quite happy to see this being in the 50% range here. Yeah, and then when we look um, how do they participate, um, 
comparable to the industry. So they also do buy support services subscriptions. I could have thought this number would a little bit be higher. Um, it's 30%. Um, I, I would have thought in public sector, perhaps they do buy more services and subscri subscriptions. Um, but this is the number here. And um, interestingly, 12% also initiate um, and support projects in the open source community, which is a good number for um, and actually 22% the public sector, they, um, uh, they provide changed open source code um, and developments back to the community. So if public sector does open source, they actually also provide um, code back to the community by 22%, which is a much higher number of the 9% which we heard from the industry, and um, which is a very good sign because um, as you mentioned before, public money, public code, um, this is what they live here when they say by 22% they provide code and changes, etc., back to the community. Absolutely. So, and I, I, I find this one just in contrast to the whole, uh, the previous slide where they have just way less interest in open source, but if they use open source and they just give it back, I like this idea. So we have to sum up our talk here. Um, we could have shown more slides, but um, this was the these were the most interesting ones. I hope um, you have now a good idea on the state of open source software here in, in Germany. It's the last latest figures. Um, the whole study and, and the full information you will uh, find online. Um, you can visit our us on our website. Um, you will find the whole study and some more interpretations from from our end on these numbers. Thank you, Julian, for joining me here on this session. Thank you for listening to to this uh, to our talk. And um, if you have any questions, um, come back to us anytime. We are happy to um, give you even more detailed uh, um, figures because we have the full numbers. Uh, so if you have specific questions to a particular industry sector and so on, um, feel free to um, to uh, ask us and get in touch with us. Thanks very much, and see you soon. See ya.